God has given me the privilege to do the things that he's giving me to do. We're all living a dream, but we need his wisdom. Draw the line of dependence because we desperately need to depend on the Lord. Listen to what Paul says to Timothy. As you continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise unto salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. All scriptures God breathed in is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. He has equipped us for every good work. The first sermon I ever preached was an accident. I had to fill in for somebody who never showed up. I thought, are you, 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 what is this? I've never spoken, I've never speak in front of 3,000 people. If it had never happened, I probably would never have got behind any pulpit anywhere. But God reminded me it had very little to do with me, everything to do with the equipment and the readiness that he gives to you. Drawing the line of uh, resistance, drawing the line of confidence, and thirdly, drawing that of independence, and then thirdly, drawing the line of confidence. You can be sure, you can be sure that at the end of it, when you have honored God, he will honor you. He's promised that. Then their honor me will I also honor. You know, Paul left Mars Hill and was discouraged, I suppose. Well, the one or two who came to know the Lord but not too many more than that. Two thousand years later, you go to Athens. You go to Athens. And ask yourself the question of you see after you've seen Athens, which is the most beautiful street there? It's the street that runs below Mars Hill. Most tourists do not do one thing they should do. It was in my third visit that I noticed that. The name of the street. The name of the street is Dionysius Areopagatos. Dionysius the Areopagite. He gave his life to the Lord when Paul preached on Mars Hill. So the very road is named after the conversion of Dionysius, which happened 2,000 years later to be named that name. But the conversion took place then, and the name was given. Who would have ever thought? That a simple man like John Wesley, you know, John Wesley wasn't very, what was he, five foot four? If you look at his robes, you think it's a kid's robe. But he preached 40,000 sermons, traveled 250,000 miles on horseback preaching the word of God, worked with 15 different languages, wrote 600 pieces of literature. At the age of 83, he was angry with his doctor because his doctor wouldn't let him preach more than 14 times a week. <laughs> At the age of 86, found written in his journal on these words, laziness is slowly creeping in. There's an increasing tendency to stay in bed after 5.30 in the morning. <laughs> when he was five or seven years old, his house was on fire. And they had so many children that Susanna Wesley had 19 kids. She lost many of them in the early stage. The father, husband, and wife grabbed the kids and took them down. They all, both thought the other had John. They didn't. Suddenly they look up and he's looking out of the window of the house of place. They couldn't go back in. So a neighbor is looking at this little boy. There's no ladder. So they form a human ladder and stand on one another's shoulders and grab him. That's why his biography is called a brand plucked from the burning. <laughs> little did they know one day they would be standing on his shoulders. But he changed history. God needs men and women like you for others to stand on your shoulders and reach to higher limits than they could have ever have reached. And so his line of confidence was such. You know what happened? He never crossed those lines. Three monarchs in a row crossed those lines to come towards him. They made the change watching Daniel's life. And then he led them back to the land from whence he had come. And so you had Sheshbazar, you had him, you had Nehemiah, you had Ezra, one after another, each playing their own role. And the walls were rebuilt, and the city was once again inhabited, and there were young people who led the way back. We know nothing about Nebuchadnezzar, but most of what we know is here. We know an awful lot about Daniel, and how he changed, and how he rebuilt his nation. The 
line of resistance, the line of dependence, the line of confidence. And so I say to you, I don't know how things are here and how tough they are here. Don't underestimate what God can do through you. Amen. Don't underestimate what God can through, do through you. God buries his workmen, but his work goes on. He buries his workmen, but his work goes on. Charles Wesley wrote this hymn. O thou who camest from above, the pure celestial fire to impart, kindle a flame of sacred love on the mean altar of my heart. There let it for thy glory burn with inextinguishable blaze, and trembling to its source return in humble prayer and fervent praise. Jesus, confirm my heart's desire to work and speak and think for thee. Still let me guard the holy fire and still stir up thy gifts in me ready for all thy perfect will, my acts of faith and love repeat, till death thy endless mercy seal, and make my sacrifice complete. To work and speak and think for thee, still let me guard the holy fire, still stir up thy gifts in me. As we close this meeting, Maybe some of you are willing to say, you know, Ravi, I really need to walk this walk more seriously. Or you're willing to say, you know, I have crossed some lines that have plundered my soul. I don't want that to happen anymore. And as we end this morning meeting, it's a simple choice. And that simple choice is this. If God has spoken to you about making some serious changes, are you willing to do that today? Maybe you don't know him. And you say, please pray for me, Ravi. I need to get right with God. You know, years ago when I was in Malay in Kuala Lumpur at Daniel Ho's church, a young man wrote to me and said, I had come to church that morning having abandoned all my belief in God. And my goal was to go that night and do everything rotten that I had ever wanted to do but never dreamed of doing it. I still got that letter of me. He said, Mrs. Zacharias, whatever message you brought that day saved me from the most destructive evening I had planned on. It's not just an evening or a morning or afternoon. Whichever way your life is headed, are you willing to make that turn inspired by the Holy Spirit? Please bow your heads and pray with me. And if you're willing to say this morning, I need to get right. I need to get right with God. Enough is enough. And you're willing to say, Rabbi, please pray for me. I have not planned on doing this, but I know this is the moment. And I need to know my moment. While your head is bowed in prayer and God has spoken to you, will you respond by saying, please pray for me? I need to get right with God. And the way you do it is very simple. Raise that hand up, and with that upraised hand, you're saying, please pray for me, Ravi. I need to get right with him today. Do it because God's spoken to you, not because he's spoken to somebody else. So I'm looking across here, and just hold that hand up high. It'll be my privilege to pray for you. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Thank you, young man. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I'm looking at my left right now. You can put your hands down, and if you raise it, I want to make sure I've seen it. Anyone else, as I look across the room, thank you, man. Thank you so much. God bless you. And on my right, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Anyone else? Yes, the back there. Thank you. Yes, thank you, man. Here's the deal. It's very important if your situation is truly at a point where you must do this or the future is being for you. Just say, please pray for me by raising that hand. I want to deal with God today. He has spoken to my heart. 